All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, BMX fans of the world. Wherever you may be, welcome to the very first edition of Inside BMX. And we're thrilled today to have two of the fastest BMX racers in the world chatting to us, Laura and Meryl Smulders. Hi. Hello. Girls, welcome to the show. Really good to have you on board. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you very much. Feeling really, really good at the moment. Just... Uh, making the best of the situation that we're in. So I uh, just wanted to ask you, how are you actually coping with the current situation that's going on in the world at the moment? How are things for the Smulders sisters? Well, yeah, well, it's a bit of a weird situation to be in, but um, I guess here in the Netherlands, we aren't in like a real bed, like a real lockdown. We can still go outside and do our stuff. So we were still able to do some training outside uh, go for road rides, do sprints. We've got a two-man gate that we can use, so it's just not riding the track at the moment, which is a bit sad, of course. But um, and no races, which were going to happen right now. But yeah, so just dealing with it. Yeah, it's certainly it's not been the easiest for the BMX community with uh, you know the loss of World Cup rounds and the World Championships and that kind of thing. In terms of your preparation for the year, Laura, I know you were working up to certain things and you'd sacrificed almost certain other races to be ready. Has that had a massive impact on you overall in terms of the way you were wanting to do stuff? Well, I'm, I was uh, well, I planned out my season to start last weekend in Verona with the Euro Cup. Um, and then I uh, wasn't going to do Manchester World Cup, but I was going to do Papenal, Rock Hill and uh, Worlds, of course, in May. So May was going to be a real big month for me. Um, I was going to prepare for that. And I was actually prepared to start my season right now. Um, so that's a bit weird, not having any races at the moment and uh, nothing to train for now. And then with the Olympics being postponed to next year, Definitely is the best decision uh, at the moment, but makes this year a bit weird because there's nothing to do really at the moment because I'm not going to stick to my training that I was doing these last few weeks. Um, last week was like nobody really knew what was going to happen and just waiting for a decision on the Olympics as the last race, race really that was still up in the air, whether it was going to go through yes or no. So I'm happy they made the decision because I was stressing out a little bit about um, having to train for something uh, without any races in between because I really like having those races like the World Cups and Worlds before to see where I'm at and then, you know, the last block towards the Olympics to still like uh, get some fine tuning done. But so kind of happy they actually postponed it to next year. Okay, so, I mean, in terms of your sort of mindset and that kind of thing, because obviously you, you're going through a process, you're building yourself up, you're trying to get yourself totally ready for probably the biggest event of a lifetime, and then suddenly it's pulled away from you. So does that affect your mindset in any way? Has it helped you to relax a little bit? Has it, has it kind of made you think in different directions in terms of the way that you want to approach stuff? I mean, for me, um, if it's this year or next year, it doesn't really matter because every year I want to be the best uh, that I can be. So next year would have been World Papenal, for instance, at the same time as the Olympics is going to be now. So, And I really wanted to go and win that one too, of course. So for me, timing-wise, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just really happy they, they made a decision on it and um, that they did postpone it to next year because training in these circumstances towards Olympic Games is definitely not ideal because you want to be able to do like 200% even of your preparation and do it like really well. And at this time, we, can, we cannot even ride a track. So um, I think... I'm pretty relaxed with it because it's not a year to train. Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm still good. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. So how does training look then now on a daily basis for, have you got access to sort of gym and that kind of stuff or are you just doing on bike stuff? I know you said you'd done some sprints today. So uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, we actually went for a road ride today, but um, ah. it's pretty, it's pretty chilled. Um, I just want to stay fit. Like so still keep busy, do some stuff. We can still do gym. We can do, we can do sprints. We can do road rides. We can do gates. So that's like 
a pretty pretty good program still that we can do so um but i'm not really putting any any pressure on it at the moment it's not really that important to do a lot of training now it's it's just basic training keeping that endurance a little bit and the explosive stuff um in there but it's not really there's no pressure on it at the moment okay and then kind of off the bike and out of the training scenario obviously you'd be spending a lot more time inside i would think how are you keeping yourselves busy um well Miro likes to bake stuff, so we're about to make a healthy brownie <laughs> with sweet potato as the main ingredient. So, oh, I've seen yeah. those. Feel free to put some in a box and post them over to England. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how long that takes, but <laughs> well, yes, uh, we just try to keep busy with all that stuff. So I actually made a puzzle for the first time in my life. <laughs> it's really? back in the box. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's there's enough ways to keep ourselves busy. We did an Instagram live earlier, so yeah, also first thing for me. Yeah, yeah. and then if, if worst comes to worst, there's always the sort of uh, online streaming services to catch up on the box sets and that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. There's enough to do these days. Yeah, fantastic. So just moving on to having a chat with you, Meryl, as well. Obviously, your season didn't start the way it wanted it to with you taking that tumble in Australia. Just give us a, a, a bit of a, an update on your current health situation, how you're feeling, how your recovery is going, and just, just where you're up to. Yeah, well, since I got home from Australia, it's been going better and better. I'm, I think I'm almost fully back to my normal training schedule, I'd say. Yeah, so I'm doing really good. Um, and Olympic wise, I did find it hard, like you said, like your goal, like your main thing for the year, like is is like gone. gone. <laughs> so I'm trying to make like my personal goals, but then within training every week, and that helps me a lot. And I think that because the Olympics are next year, I even have a like more time to prepare myself for the games especially because I crashed and it would have been a stressful time right now if the games were like this year, since I still need to like ride or do something to qualify myself. Um, but yeah, so I think it's better for me that it's, that it's next year. Okay, okay, cool. Well, I've been watching your uh, YouTube channel and the videos that you've been putting up, which have been really good, by the way, because um, I know one of them, you said you had plans for kind of post-Olympics and your education and that kind of thing. So has that all been kind of moved back a year now? Uh, no, I actually, I've been in con contact with the school today uh, explaining my situation, and they have uh, special special rules for... Uh, full-time athletes and they really want to help me combine school with my full-time athlete life but that will definitely continue oh that's nice it's nice to hear that you've got the flexibility on that kind yeah. of thing so so that would be uh that would be awesome so um the other thing i wanted to mention as well was just kind of uh you two obviously being siblings and racing together and that kind of thing do you find that an advantage? Do you drive each other on? Is there sibling rivalry, as it were? Does it uh, does it make you work harder? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. For me, for me, it's well, Miro is really the perfect training partner because usually a few years ago, if somebody would beat me in training, it wouldn't really bother me that much. But if Miro does, <laughs> it really bothers me. So <laughs> I I just want to keep in front and she she cannot beat me definitely not so it definitely pushes me a lot to go harder in training and then of course makes me race faster too yeah because obviously you had the 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 memorable situation in baku in 2018 where you came one and two obviously with your teammate judy coming in top three the the screams of delight as you came across the line definitely let us know how you well, felt definitely more male than me <laughs> So, uh, I mean, going back to that moment, is, is do you think you could top that in your career? Probably like an Olympic one, two, or something like that. Oh, I, I, hope so. it, I hope so, but it would be very hard to to get that get something like that again. It's like there are so many good girls uh, racing so fast, and then to to get a podium together and then one, two at at a world champs. That's 
I, I, I remember the race. It's actually funny because um, I think, well, Meryl definitely had the best gate of the whole day. And I think she was the fastest down the hill too. Yeah. Um, Elisa and I definitely didn't have the best gate of our day, but um, I remember being sandwiched by Meryl and Elise <laughs> going into the first year. Yeah, that was that was definitely a surprise for me to have Meryl next to me into the first year. I didn't think that was going to happen. That was not really in my uh, head, I guess. But yeah, going into the second year, and I passed Elise, and but then I heard a crash happen behind me. I was like, oh shit! I hope that's not Meryl behind me. But then I was like, no, I shouldn't think about that. She go keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> And then across the finish line, I heard her scream. So I was like, okay, she's still on the bike. <laughs> Look behind me, she's in the second. I was like, oh, uh, yeah. Well, it seems like a, a dream situation. You, you also seem to do really well at places like Papadal. Obviously, it's your home track. You know it like the back of your hand. And it, it seems to be one of those places where your memorable laps do happen. We've just got one from, uh, I think it was either last year or the year before, uh, one of your wins at Papadal. We could just take a look at that. And if you could kind of run us through your thoughts and feelings and just give the fans out there an idea when you're up on the hill and you're putting a lap together, exactly what is going through your head as you're going round. So if we, we I'll, what I'll do is I'll put it up on the screen. If you can give us a bit of a, uh, sort of a run through of, of the lap and, and what you saw and what you felt and that kind of thing. And it might just give the fans a, a, a different sort of perspective on it. So uh, I'll put that on screen now. Just bear with me a second. So this is uh, 2018, either Saturday or Sunday, I can't really remember. <laughs> I think Sunday, Sunday's final. So right now, um, they announce my name and the whole crowd goes wild like it's actually so far from the crowd but you still hear all of them scream that's so cool such a good feeling it does make me a little bit nervous but like good nerves um i think i had a pretty good gate next to elise definitely pressure was on because that girl's always really fast and fair straight so the only thing i remember thinking was i need to make sure i'm gonna put those pedals in on the fair straight so I had the first jump perfect, second jump perfect, did a lot of pedals and then Elise was still a little bit in front of me but I got her in the first turn because I had the inside lane. And then from there I think I had the smoothest lap ever. Um, second, second straight was really good, I think we had a little bit of a headwind there and then third straight was really smooth as well. Um, going into the last year and you hear the crowd go wild that's always that's special feeling you well I don't really get anywhere else than Papa now it's such a really cool thing to have the big crowd on the last straight cheering for you when you're in the first place so going down the last straight it's a little bit of a slow motion for me in my head and then crossing the finish line first fist bump and just <laughs> cheering all the way up um, and then, yeah, the crowd going wild. It's just, it's just the best feeling. Yeah, certainly winning in front of your home crowd must be massively special, and you've been lucky to do it more than once. So, is there another race in the world that kind of really holds appeal for you? I mean, places that we've been to places like Santiago del Estero, Australia. We've been to Rock Hill. Is there another race apart from Papendal where you just think, yeah, this is this is the place I want to be. This is my race. Um. I don't know, it's pretty hard. Papenau definitely has the special feeling. Um, definitely put more pressure on myself too, racing there. Um, for other races, I think Santiago has a special place because it's just such a, I don't, a special place to travel to. Um, you don't really have that anywhere else. Um, but I don't really particularly like racing there. It's not really my track. Um, I did win there a few times. Um, um, I think um, Worlds in Colombia was really cool. Uh, and that track I also really liked. It was technical. Um, but there's no, no other World Cup circuit races that I... Well, Paris has a really good crowd as well. I think that's probably the second one to park. Okay. Fantastic. Meryl, how about yourself? Which, uh, which tracks sort of do it for you apart from Papendal? Well, I was just... Just thinking, um, at the Tokyo test event, I had chills almost every time imagining that I could be right there 
this year, but like next year <laughs> for the games, for the, for the Olympic games. So yeah, already the test event gave me like those chills. No like crowd though, but yeah, but it, yeah, it just did. <laughs> So. Yeah, how is that track, by the way? Because obviously nobody else was there apart from the athletes and, and invited parties. So, you know, your usual kind of World Cup sort of spectators and that kind of thing probably wouldn't have been there. How is that track different from everything else that you've ridden? Long. Yeah. Long, right, okay. Well, that's very long. <laughs> would, that, would that adjust your, your training strategy then for going into an Olympics? Um, adjust it. I don't think so, but definitely has a little bit of little bit more of endurance in there. Yeah. A little bit. Just do my full laps on long tracks instead of short tracks. <laughs> <laughs> long, long, long. Towards those forty-five second laps. Probably. Yeah. Certainly, there'll be some lactic acid building up in the legs between those oh. motors. That's for sure. Or I actually we had to do seven seven laps at the test event. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't get to do the last one, unfortunately. I was definitely ready for the last one, but I, I thought at the beginning because we had so much riding time throughout the whole week, we did so much practice sessions, yeah. so many hours and efforts and everything. I was already feeling pretty shitty before the race happened, um, and then knowing we had to do forty. 50 plus second laps um because the third straight wasn't really great at that time so i hope they definitely change that but i didn't feel that bad between racing and and going through all those seven or well, six laps and then having to go into the final i actually felt pretty good so i was surprising myself how my endurance was uh, at the time after such a big week of uh, riding the track okay how was tokyo was a city for you both did you enjoy it amazing it is so <laughs> different but i liked it so much because everything's so structured and clean and it's it's, it's a really nice yeah. really nice place to be i definitely go back there and do some proper traveling through japan because i think it's a really cool country yeah what, what was the best part of tokyo <laughs> the city then? i still go to tokyo just to watch and to see, see the some, city again yeah. What was the best part of the city then? Which bit did you enjoy the most? Well, I did, I did a, a little a sightseeing tour on a bike with uh, Merli from Mentham. Um, I just like that you could just chill uh, right through the whole city with a bike. That's not common in every like big city. So, yeah, we did our own sightseeing tour on a bike. Which was really cool, I think. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. I like the Shibuya, Shibuya crossing, okay. and I went to the temples with Saya, the the things. What do you call them again? Temples. Yeah, I oh, forgot. Oh. I but I, yeah, that that was really special too. I really like that. Fantastic. And how was the hurricane that hit? <laughs> that looked pretty scary. The the things what? that. Were mad at right? me for going into it and wanting to watch. Well, how it was going. We had no idea when it was going to hit, right? They all told us, stay inside because it's going to be hectic. <laughs> These people decided to go out at 7 p.m. when the, sh the storm is going to hit soon. They're just going to walk out to the water. I was like, you're crazy. You need to come back. <laughs> I, I didn't go alone, though. I went with Joris, Neek, Ruby, Dave. I said, you're all nuts. So. You need to come back inside. Be safe. <laughs> So 13 numbers then? Well, I guess like adrenaline junkies or something, but I, I thought it was already scary in, in the building. Because <laughs> there was video footage of the building actually, I think it was shaking, wasn't it, at yeah. one point? Yeah, yeah, you could definitely, well, we were on like the 10th floor or something, not, yeah. not the highest, and you could definitely feel it going a little bit. And then going outside, there was like a parking lot, like, and the wind was going in front of it, so we could stand outside the building, but still not be in the wind behind the wall. It's just crazy. Some people went into the wind, and you just see like them all almost falling over or running. I don't know. It, it's just scary to see something like that. I've never seen it before. Brilliant. It, it sounds like an amazing time, and I'm sure once you go back there for the Olympics, you know, in 2021, it'll probably be the experience of a lifetime. So, yeah, that seems like a good place to wrap things up, girls. So uh, we really, really appreciate you coming on board at uh, uh, Inside BMX for the very first edition. 
Uh, thanks for taking the time to chat to us today. We look forward to seeing you back on track eventually when uh, things come back to normal. So thank you very much. Yeah, um, nobody knows when, but yes, get, definitely look can't forward wait. to the moment. Yeah. So uh, again, thank you for coming on board. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you sometime soon. Thank you too. Thank yeah. you.
Yeah, it's definitely a weird situation at the moment with the coronavirus hitting all over the world. Um, such a weird, like, bad movie kind of thing to be in that you can't really stop. Um, but I think at the moment, sport isn't first priority. It's definitely health across the whole world. So although it's our life and it's all we know, um, just preparing for uh, the games, for, in for instance, it's not the Im most important thing at the moment. So for us, it's just keeping busy, uh, staying healthy, staying inside, um, helping um, whoever we can help. Um, but yeah, as an athlete, just trying to stay busy, do some road rides. We can actually do still, still do a lot of training, road rides, gym, uh, sprints, gates. We've got a two man gate. So yeah, just keeping busy dealing with, um, with our rules here, um, yeah. which is we can still go outside and it's actually pretty good weather. So for the first time in the Netherlands, um, it's spring and it actually feels like spring. So <laughs> Yeah, handling pretty well, dealing with it, and um, yeah, just hoping it will go away soon. <laughs>